this video, I would like to focus in on the filters that are available when you've searched for a substance, either by name, of course, or indeed by structure. And to illustrate this, I'm first of all going to do uh, a fragment based search. So basically, I'm going to search for some organic fragments together uh, to generate a large answer set. So first of all, I'm going to draw a trifluoro methyl group and leave that just as it is. I'm also going to use this functionality right here to very quickly draw a cyclopropane ring system and then I'm going to add in an imidazole ring as well. So let's go and put those nitrogens in at that position and and right there. So I've drawn three separate fragments which is completely permissible to do in SciFinder M. Click on OK. And now I'm going to run the search. When we've done that, of course, we get zero as drawn because we have three separate fragments, but we have 156,000 substructure results. So let's take a look at those. First of all, I'm going to change the sort order from number of references descending to relevance. So what that does is it will bring up to the top essentially the smallest molecules to begin with that contain those three fragments. As you can see in answer number one, contains precisely those three fragments with nothing else included. If we look now down at our filters, then of course we can filter by the reaction role. So we can see that we have reactions to make over 16,000 of these. Over 2,000 are used as reactants and one as a solvent. The reference role allows us to identify the substances that perhaps uh, are used in a biological study. Or if we click on view all, we can also identify those that perhaps have pharmacokinetic activity related to them, or indeed also perhaps the broad therapeutic use or pharmacological activity. Also, if you have the availability of the bioactivity data, then you may also see this filter as well that will allow you to filter to those where we have structure activity relationships, toxicity data or ADME data as well. There's also the option to filter to those that are commercially available or not. And then we can also filter by the number of components. Most of these are single component systems. But if we limit to, for example, three components, then it will identify those where our substances or our fragments rather are across three separate components. They could be in the same component as we can see in, in these examples, or indeed there may be examples where, as we have right here, two are in one component and the third fragment is, is in another. So that is something that we can do. Let's remove that filter by clicking on the cross to go back to our original answer set. And furthermore, we can also filter by the molecular weight. So maybe we want to limit to a certain molecular weight range, then we can certainly go ahead and do that. Filter to whether there is stereochemistry in our answers or not. We can also filter to the presence of certain elements. Now, of course, what I have drawn includes carbon, nitrogen, fluorine and, uh, and hydrogen, of course, which is why we see those elements present at 156. They are certainly there. But if we click on view all, then we can also identify perhaps where one of the halogens may be present, perhaps chlorine or bromine or iodine, in addition, of course, to fluorine that we already have. There's also the option to filter to the substance class. And I'm going to click on view all for this. Remember, these filters are live filters, so they represent exactly what is found within my answer set. Most will be seen as organic or inorganic small molecules, but we do have mixtures present. And even those that would be classified as being a protein or peptide sequence, 
three coordination compounds, three polymers. So these will allow us to narrow down our answer set to the kind of substance that we may be looking for. And then we also see further filters along the bottom to filter to the presence or absence of isotopes or metals where certain experimental properties or spectra may be available. The bioactivity indicators and the, and the target indicators, as we've seen in a previous video. And then the regulatory data. So when we open this up, we can see that certainly three of these substances are on a regulatory list from the European Union. There is also a search within results. And what this does, this will allow us to search for a certain structural component that may be within our answer set. Where this can be quite useful is to actually consider that when we review our results, maybe we can see something in our structure that perhaps we don't want. For example, in this case, we have the trifluoromethyl directly connected to the cyclopropane ring. If we don't want to have substances that have that, then we can come across, click on exclude. And then when we scroll down to the bottom and we have search within results, if we click on draw, we can select a new draw window and we can draw that cyclopropane ring where the trifluoromethyl group is directly connected to that. So we can use the shortcut in this instance. Let's go and select trifluoromethyl, add that, click on OK. And now we want to come down to the bottom. Of course, this would be as a substructure because we are looking for this fragment as a substructure. If we click on search, that has now removed the answers where the trifluoromethyl group is directly connected to the cyclopropane ring. So these are a few of the filters around the substances. Also, of course, in this video, we've looked at searching for substances by fragment. Sometimes that in itself can be very useful if perhaps we don't know how things are connected. And then we've also looked at the way to exclude something from our answer set. And in this particular example, we've excluded where the trifluoromethyl is directly connected to that cyclopropane ring. Remember that if we want to now filter in a more positive sense, remember to make sure to come across and now click on filter by, otherwise exclude will stay as a sticky preference. So if we want to filter in a more positive sense, just remember to go and click on filter by. And then of course you are free then to filter down using any of the categories that you see under the filter options.